2008 started with unusual meteorological activity in the winter months and saw an unusual amount of tornadic activity with February setting a new record for tornadoes in that month. By year's end, 2008 would be the most deadly year in the United States for tornado-related fatalities since 2008. By the year's end, 2008 would rank second only behind 2004 for the most confirmed tornado activity in the United States, and that's only been surpassed once since in 2011. On Friday, March 14, 2008, the skies over Atlanta, Georgia darkened. At 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, the Storm Prediction Center issued a slight risk of severe weather across portions of the southern United States from Oklahoma to Georgia. They predicted a 2% risk for tornadoes in the Atlanta area. Mostly unaware, though, were 15,623 SEC fans in the Georgia Dome watching the second round of the game between Alabama and Mississippi State or waiting for the 945 tip-off of Kentucky and Georgia. Over the next 36 hours across Alabama, Georgia, North Carolina, and South Carolina, there would be 46 confirmed tornadoes and that sadly resulted in three fatalities and 46 injuries, but it could have been much, much worse. Remember to like and subscribe. I've seen many articles, interviews, and videos where the phrase sports saved my life gets used. Sometimes it pulls a player out of a really bad situation or depression. Like I was reading about Paralympic athlete Nick Springer, a lifelong hockey player when at age 14, surgeons had got forced to amputate his legs above the knee and his arms below the elbow because he had contracted a rare form of meningitis while hiking the Appalachian Trail. He then found sled hockey and eventually wheelchair rugby and that drive to compete kept him going. Or there are many stories about how a pro sport was able to pull a kid out of abject poverty and save his entire family or even from communist regimes and give them a life that could have never been possible before. But for fans, it's usually a team pulling you out of a depression or a crazy story like this year, how a fan at a Tampa Bay Rays game went into cardiac arrest and a nearby fan placed him on the ground and began performing CPR. Three first responders rushed to the fan and immediately started performing life-saving care. They were able to get the fan's heart beating again and took him to the closest hospital. This guy just happened to be sitting right next to some first responders because he was at a sporting event that day. But it's not every day sports save someone from natural disasters. Back in 2008, Alabama opened the SEC tournament against Florida, where Alabama had a 14-0 and 11-0 run in the first 11 minutes to lead by 25 before Florida even reached double figures in the game. The Crimson Tide took their biggest lead of 42-14 with four minutes left in the first half and then just struggled to put the game away. The Crimson Tide had a 28-point lead, shrank to just six before recovering to beat Florida. Riley tied a school record with eight three-pointers and finished with 26 points. The senior guard snapped Florida's momentum with back-to-back -back threes after the Gators pulled to a 57-51 with nine minutes and two seconds left. After the 80-69 win, Alabama matched up with the number one seed in the West, Mississippi State, led by junior guard Jamont Gordon and senior Charles Rhodes, accompanied by sophomore Ben Hansbro, the younger brother of the UNC star, and sophomore Barry Stewart. On March 14, 2008, Alabama under Mark Godfrey came into the game as the fifth seed in the West and a 5-11 conference record, only above Auburn. Although after beating Florida, Alabama did come into this game favored by three points. Alabama had a strong first half shooting the ball well from three-point range and getting to the free throw line. Mississippi State struggled to score in the first half, but they were able to close the half on a strong run. Alabama had 10 steals in the first half while Mississippi State only had two. Alabama won the rebounding battle 22 to 18. Alabama led by as many as 10 points in the first half and Mississippi State closed it on a 10-2 run to cut the lead to 36 to 29 at halftime. 
Going into the half, Mikel Riley of Alabama led with 12 points, while Jermont Gordon led Mississippi State with only 9. The second half was a back and forth affair, and neither team was able to take control. Mississippi State took a 49-47 lead with 11-28 remaining in the game. But Alabama responded with a 7-0 run to take a 54-49 lead. Mississippi State tied the game 59-59 with 2 minutes and 11 remaining in regulation. And that brings us to this moment. <laughs> Alabama's Mikel Riley hit a three-point with 1.1 seconds left to send the game to overtime. Riley's play throughout the game was up and down. He started the game slowly, but he picked up his scoring in the second half. He was also a key contributor on defense, helping hold Mississippi State's leading scorer, Jermont Gordon, to only 14 points. Before shot, he was one from seven for three on the night. But when it was needed the most, the shot fell. The game went into overtime, and fans stayed in the Georgia Dome. And what fans didn't know yet is not only did they get overtime that night, but that three-point shot may have just saved their lives. The first five minutes of overtime went scoreless, with both teams just trading missed shots. And with two minutes and 11 seconds remaining in overtime, Mississippi State took a 64-61 lead on a jumper by Jamont Gordon. Then, this happened. some rumbling behind us there's some concern the building is uh, rocking a bit not exactly sure why some of our standards may have something to do with weather conditions still exist in downtown Atlanta thank you for your there's a tornado warning in downtown Atlanta we're being told and it has caused uh, the top of the Georgia Dome is, is actually moving. But we do have power, which is amazing. I do see some movement. Actually, some debris in the air behind us. Right. They're coming from the roof. Let's see our camera. If, if there's any way we can get our camera. A tornado moved through downtown Atlanta and ripped holes in the Georgia Dome. The tornado hit at about 9.40 p.m., causing $1.8 million worth of damage to the dome and hundreds of millions in the metro Atlanta area. Yet miraculously, there was only one fatality that night. If not for that overtime, thousands of fans who were not staying for the late game would have been right in the path of the tornado, outside the dome. That three-point shot, that buzzer beater, the moments of the game that led to that overtime, had Alabama or Mississippi State run out, won the game outright, everything could have been different. Instead, we might be talking about the SEC tragedy, the tornado that took out hundreds of people that just tore through the parking lot. Instead, we have the shot that saved lives. The game would go on to be delayed for an hour and five minutes while they inspected the building to make sure they could continue playing. And when the game finally resumed, Mississippi State was able to pull out a 69-67 win. The season ended for Alabama, and Mikel Riley was about to carve out a solid career overseas. After 12 years of playing overseas, he hung it up, and he may no longer be playing, but he's the only player I've ever heard of whose jump shot saved lives. I mean, it's a wild thought, though. One pass is slightly different, one call goes slightly different, a ball hits at a slightly different trajectory, and everyone's lives change with some kind of crazy butterfly effect. But instead, everything lined up perfectly that night perfectly to keep the fans in the stands and out of the streets. I mean, just while, listen to that footage again. It's like a freight train going by. The announcer comments, he hears it like a freight train. And it's a tornado passing 200 feet from the Georgia Dome. It's one of the most insane stories I've ever found, and I can't believe I did not know about it sooner. It's one that I feel like should get talked about more because of just how insane it is and how awesome it is that that three-point shot went in and everyone stayed safe. 
And apparently a tornado warning was in the area, so it, this could be a case of a tornado actually being in the area. And it definitely sounded like a locomotive. It did. It sounded like a freight train. Which, which is the sound of a tornado. Which is the sound of a tornado. Yeah. And it clearly was exactly that. And, and both, both teams are off the floor, we should say. They have taken both teams back to the locker rooms. I've oftentimes been told that in situations like this, uh, Dome Stadium is, is the best possible place that you could be. I hope you're right. 